G'day friends! Welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. This is Steve. Hi! This is my husband. Today, Steve's gonna play Barbara Walters in his little captain's uniform. And he's going uniform. to- Uniform. <laughs> it's just the hat. I'm feeling very Mediterranean these days because the sun is shining, winter is that your over. Is this that- a... did you have that before Virtual Voyage or is that the Burtonville one? This is started- we purchased this with uh, Burtonville. I knew it. And then we wore it for a red Steve's curtain. wearing his JLB Creative costuming outside. <laughs> um, it's very fun. It makes me like- it feels, feels the whole- like, Mediterranean like, fantasy, mm -hmm, etc, etc. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for being here, I should just say. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna be a little- we should be a little- bit of your corner screen up here. We're going to do picture in picture action again today because we're going to answer the assumptions that I opened up in the Instagram stories last week. I put an Instagram story up and just said, ask, uh, what are your assumptions about me? Um, it's a very, that's very bold of you. Very brave. It's a very egotistical thing to do. <laughs> it's very narcissistic. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> I am an influencer. Um, no, what I wanted to do, I'll explain a bit why. I think I put this in the slide too. Um, we've got a new bunch of people around, not a super like huge influx or anything, but we've had steady growth over the past, I would say year. So welcome. Um, yeah, so welcome. Uh, I wanted to kind of reintroduce the expectations around JLB Creative in different spaces. And I also wanted to kind of address some of the things that you might be thinking like, but not a Q and A. I didn't really want to do a Q and A because they just kind of, they, I, I don't know. I've never really had a lot of fun doing the Q and A's. They just seem to be a bit more random. I wanted to know exactly what people assumed about me so that I could kind of clear it all up. I felt like this video would be a good clear up for everything um, because I do actually notice in different parts of, you know, some messages I receive and some comments I see, people are assuming different things about what should be on YouTube, what should be on Instagram, who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Um, and I thought there's no better way to see that than to just clarify. get it straight from the horse's mouth. We'll do a one and done take so you can see exactly what questions I'm struggling with and you can read between the lines. <laughs> Steve's here to keep me honest. Steve will give you a, a little, uh, I guess he'll give you the inside scoop <laughs> on what my answers are because I'm very subjective I towards mean, James, myself. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this much, James is pretty, he's he's pretty much an like, open book. Well, I don't know about open book. What you, what he says, like what you see is, what you see is- Now what, you're implicating what he me. Says, <laughs> What you see is what you get. Yeah. That's it. Thank I would you. say so. Yeah. And I've seen all the questions. Nothing is... I mean, there are some questions there that I think we've had to kind of go over just yeah. because I didn't want to <laughs> be insensitive. Um, but they're... Yeah, I mean, for the most part, pretty interesting assumptions. So we're here to clear some of that up today. Um, nothing bad. I'm not angry. No one's angry. No one's... I'm not trying to call anybody out. I opened up the floor for these assumptions. So please don't feel offended. I'm excited. I invited it. Um, <laughs> this is also uh, a good opportunity for us to just to quickly reiterate kind of what happens on all the social media platforms. I'm going to give you the Cliff's Notes versions because um, he does a really good job of summarizing Cliff. And we're going to just say that YouTube, every week I intend to upload one video per week. It is typically on a Friday and Pacific Standard Time. So that's Saturdays in Australia um, and whatever else in the rest of the world. So we like to do one video a week Typically, YouTube videos are just exactly what I've got to stop looking here. People hate it when I look there. I have to look here. Yes. Um, <laughs> that is a comment I've seen. <laughs> People, um, I generally just put up a YouTube video of exactly what I'm enjoying in the moment. So if I'm doing one of my workshops, it will most likely be workshop around related. the workshop. Maybe yeah. a flip, maybe a preparing video. Um, if I'm doing a challenge, it'll most likely be challenge videos. So for me, the YouTube space more recently has become share whatever I want to share, uh, however I want to share it. Uh, so I'm, I don't really take any requests, nor do I really work to a schedule of like diversifying content. I know I used to on the channel, I used to do a lot of different things like tutorials and little challenges and then behind the scenes and like vlogs and travel things. Um, you know, obviously I will do that whenever I feel like doing that again. I'm not saying this stuff will never happen. Uh, but if I end up posting like six journal with me's in a row or like three journal flips in a row That is because that is what I want to share and I feel like it's more important for me to Authentically share what I am enjoying so that that joy comes through the best it can Rather than work towards an obligation to film a certain type of content and then start to feel resentment for it um, So I hope that you trust me when I say that I, I really do come from a place of just sharing what I want to share. Even this this video is what I want to share today. I wanted to share some of my uh, cute kawaii book journaling studies that I've been doing and I also wanted to share information. So this is something I'm happy to do and I feel like hopefully that authenticity really shines through and um, 
and that you trust that I am doing this in the interest of longevity, really. Uh, we've seen many YouTubers, I know we all have followed people in the past that have just Ex they've worked to expectations of content from their audience and then eventually either burnt out or become so resentful you you, you sense how resentful they get about the content you almost feel like it's your fault that they don't like it anymore I don't want you to feel like that so I will always do what I enjoy and uh, if you enjoy it that's great if you don't there are so many other uh, wonderful creators out there that will probably be doing something that you like to watch anyway uh, also we have a ton of different outlets as well. So if you're only on YouTube, I would encourage you to maybe hop over on Instagram. Instagram we do live streams and in March we did 17 of them. Wow. So that's a lot. We, you can come and just chat to me, ask me anything. I'm pretty loose-lipped over on Instagram <laughs> lives, very unfiltered. Not that I'm filtered here, but I, um, yeah, it's a lot more casual, a lot more laid back. Steve sometimes joins us and we just have a fun time. So join us on Instagram Live. There's no schedule for that, again, for the same reason. I want to be able to do it when I'm feeling most like I want to do it so that I can have the most fun doing it. Um, otherwise, you know, if I've got a choice, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong working to obligation if you have to, but if you have a choice, like, why wouldn't you set it up? So you could just enjoy it the yeah, best. Yeah, of course. Um, so I take full advantage of that and I'm very aware of it. And I'm sorry if that's not what you want. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to do that for the longevity of, of how I'm able to share. So I hope that is, uh, I hope that's clear. Uh, that is YouTube. Instagram, I post behind the scenes of a lot of stuff as well. I also post news on Instagram frequently. So if something's being restocked or we're doing something new, typically goes to Instagram first. Instagram is, is like, is number one, is for all news related mm. When the store gets restocked. I'm pretty sure it's that's where I go first. That's the first place. It's the story, <laughs> typically. So <laughs> I'm always around on Instagram, I think. Yeah, I uh, feel like that's the, the, the best, like the deep, the most effective way of communication from on our end. Yeah. From your end to, the, to everybody. Yeah. I also think, uh, I'll just clear this up. YouTube comments, I do read them all, even though I don't respond to them all. Um, and... And I'm really sorry about that, but sometimes, oh, I was meant to say this too. If you ask me what something is, chances are I have linked it in the Amazon storefront that I have in the description box. So mm. I would always check there first because um, even if it's not cheaper on there, I link it so you can see the brand or the size or the color or something. Um, so go and check there first. Otherwise, I would really, uh, this sounds so snotty of me, but I would really love it if you just paused the video and tried to read it because that is exactly what I have to do <laughs> when I go back. Um, and some of these videos are from years ago when I really don't know what the stuff is anymore. Like some of them are unbranded things as well or things you can't really get easily. So or discontinued. Yeah, I, I find it really hard to answer those questions. Uh, just off the top of my head, so they generally go unanswered. But um, I do read them all, so also if you've expressed any concerns or anything, I have read that. Um, I may not respond to it, sometimes I just don't feel like responding to certain things, but uh, also just please know that I do read everything, even if I don't respond. Probably makes me out to be even worse, to be honest. <laughs> I appreciate all your really lovely comments. I think here's one of the other realities is, and we, there's no assumption question on this, so it might be good just to address, um, but yeah, there's a lot of people that try to contact me at any given point. Um, and that is really, really sweet and wonderful, but it just takes an immense amount of time to respond. And I just don't have it anymore. Like back in the day, I used to be pretty good about responding. These days, it is just kind of inconceivable that I could actually respond to everybody. And so... But the reason is that's because there's so many working parts that are happening here at JLB No, Creative. I just don't want to. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, there I, is. I, I'm usually doing something else and I, I try my best to dedicate time to it. But it's also, it, it's such a huge responsibility with so many different questions coming from so many different places um, that usually, unless it is extremely pressing, like if it's a client who has bought something, like a, a customer from the Etsy store, or if it's someone who's doing a workshop that needs help getting onto their workshop or something, that is what I dedicate my time to and for the pure fact that I mean it's just that's business so a lot of the more like hey what pen were you using in that video three years ago that is just I really can't answer that stuff uh, frequently I'm so sorry I try my best now to say it in the video just in case but even then I forget a lot so catch me on Instagram live because that is also a great way to ask any of those questions mm. what are those pencils oh here they are I'm always happy to answer those questions on Instagram live real time then you'll get uh, a really good honest answer 
as quick as you can. Mm -hmm. So uh, Instagram Live is great for that. Instagram DMs, again, I don't really have all the time in the world to um, answer every single one of them, especially because some of the reactions on Insta stories show up as their own message. So sometimes I'll just open and I'll see it's just some emoji reactions. Um, I don't usually respond to anything like that. Again, it's usually just more pressing concerns, uh, re-business things. But I do, from time to time, try, I try to like schedule a few hours where I can actually respond to uh, stories and, you know, just general conversations. So it's not like I don't try to, but I really should be honest and clear up that I don't make it my number one priority to answer every question. Mm. I know some YouTube, YouTubers do, and that is really wonderful. Um, unfortunately, YouTube isn't like the the top part of my business, like as far as where priority needs to go for time. So uh, it is just a place where I find it fun to share video content. Um, yeah, that's it. Does that yeah. sound like it? Yeah. TikTok I joined recently just to be an idiot on. <laughs> <laughs> it's very silly and funny. It is what it is. Etsy shop? Etsy, yeah, we sell products on Etsy if you want to go there. Um, oh, if you want more content or you want different content, like if you're looking for more of that other stuff, we do have a, I always, talk about the free stuff, but we have paid content as well that you can find on Teachable. That's linked in the description. Um, we do workshops over there, really big workshops like Whimsical Illustration, Memory to Memento, they're like big investment workshops. We also have kind of live workshop experiences like Virtual Voyage, that's pretty new. We're starting our fourth one in June. Oh, I think that's my mother. Oh, it's my sister calling. I have to call her back. Hi, Siobhan. <laughs> she doesn't watch my videos, I don't think. Um, yeah, so we're starting that in June. We have workshops and obviously more stuff you can find over there if you want to uh, pay for some of that content or invest in a workshop. So that is also Virtual available. Voyage is so fun. Yes, he's wearing his costume. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get into the assumptions, Barbara Walters. All right. Sorry about all of that up front. I, 25 people just left, I'm sure. <laughs> but I just thought I'd have to kind of address all of that so that... It's so done. I addressed it. Now yeah, it's, it's done, done now. Now it's done. All right. So we have several assumptions, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to go through these. I think they're, they're, it's very interesting. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right. Assumption number one. You want more than two cats. Yes. If I lived on a big farm or something, well, not a farm because I don't want them to get yeah. with the wild animals. If we had a big if mansion. If had a big, house. big house. Big house. Yeah, I'd probably have a lot more. We'd also need a housekeeper to do all the after the yeah, cat I don't stuff do because he's either. not going to do any <laughs> part of the cat cleaning whatsoever. <laughs> I don't do cat maintenance. Next. <laughs> uh, I would probably have like five or ten. There is somewhere else you post new shop class info. I always miss out. Oh, from IG. No, it's usually on Instagram first. You're really not missing out on anything. I, um, I, I don't know if I'm posting it frequently enough. I do have a bit of an issue with like oversaturating marketing materials. And it's just because I, as a consumer, hate seeing it. I just don't want it. I don't want anyone's Instagram platform to be Facebook. their own ads. It's Instagram and the Facebook group. Yeah, typically. Facebook group, I'll usually put it on there second, but usually it's always Instagram. YouTube will probably hear about it last because um, it's only one video a week. But... Yeah, I usually do an Instagram first, so you're definitely not missing anything if you've seen it on Instagram. I just, I really don't oversaturate the marketing materials, and that is just my own personal thing, because I don't like to see it. I, I get really, I understand why people do it, but when like every post is about something that's coming up, it just drives me a little nuts, so I don't tend to do that. So like when we always post about Virtual Voyage? Even then, I think I post like two or two three times months. before it starts. Um, I'm the worst at the marketing. I love to do it, but I just don't love to be, I don't love to be incessant about it. All right. Uh, assumption that you have your life together. I love watching your videos. Your imagination is wild. Thank you. That's really sweet. Uh, I have my life together. I think that's relative. I have a life together enough to feel like I'm, you know, successful. So yeah, sure. Um, my mind is more, my imagination is more wild at night when I'm sleeping. So yeah, I wish we could tap into that. <laughs> James gets wild dreams wild dreams wild. my subconscious is super active yeah. and like really brings to the forefront things that have happened weeks ago in fact i can't tell you too much but i've been writing down some of my dreams and one of them when i was trying to find where all of these individual parts came from something was from a month ago that's just sitting in the back there that thought you know what let's throw that into the dream as well wild. it was really weird uh you love frozen margaritas sure why not on a tropical holiday yeah why not <laughs> Uh, salt or no salt? Salt. Yeah, always. Um, nothing. Never assume. Well, thank you. Correct answer. <laughs> so all you else failed. <laughs> uh, you thoroughly enjoy what you're doing and could do it forever. 
I do enjoy it. Uh, yes, I mean, I've always done arts and crafts. Art journaling is relatively new to me. It's about five years since I've known what art journaling was specifically and made more of a switch towards just focusing on that as my could artistic expression. Uh, yes, the art journaling I could do forever, the art I could do forever, the creativity I could do forever, the job I couldn't do forever. It is, it's a very demanding kind of business part that goes on that I don't share as often. You could if you had a bigger team. But then I, I wouldn't want to manage a team. That's the thing. It's even more. Like, I think the thing is, like, you want to grow, but then you realize all of your problems scale with your growth. So if you haven't got time now, you're only going to grow to have less time. So my interest has been less about um, scaling up in a way that would take more of my time. Um, it would just be more of my time. energies. Yeah, I want to scale up in a way that's a little bit more, you know, like making evergreen content and workshops that are... Uh, passive income streams like YouTube and uh, Amazon affiliate links, stuff like that. That has been more of my interest. But yeah, so I couldn't do the job forever. I don't think anyone would want to do a job forever. I, I've really always done arts and crafts as like my hobby. So I would always do that. Hmm. And I do really enjoy it. It's good. Uh, this really. person says, I don't have any. I just always forget you have a twin. I guess I assume you and your brother are not close. Yes, I do have a twin. That is correct. I have a fraternal twin. He is 17 minutes older than I am, and we don't look anything alike. <laughs> um, to assume we're not close, I'm close with all of my family. I think, yeah, I don't bring him up as much. When growing up, we kind of became very independent of what I think people expect a twin relationship to be. Um, Steve has twin brothers as well. They're very similar, I'm not a twin. Very close. They are twins. Yeah, they, though, his two younger brothers are twins yes. with each other. Um, are they identical? They, they are, are identical. Yeah. Um, I can tell the difference now, so I don't know if that makes them identical or not. Um, but yeah, I think you would expect a certain level of relationship with twins that my brother and I kind of became very independent of at about like, age 11, 10 or 11, um, just because we were so different. Like I was doing ballet and dancing and dressing up as Dorothy and jumping on the trampoline. My brother was doing military and cadets and scouts and cross motocross I, <laughs> that just wasn't me but um you yeah, know i love him and i guess close is a relative term mm. but yeah i would say i'm close to all my family uh you do not actually sleep you make so much art and content i don't see how you have time left that's actually a funny um assumption i do get eight hours of sleep james sleeps all the time just the rest of the day i'm working <laughs> um no i i do work a lot i do get a lot done i would say that's probably more due to over the years, I've been like very good about maximizing my efficiency. So I, I can multitask a few things. I'm not very good at it. The sleep schedule is... But my sleep schedule is fine, I think. I just, I sleep a lot later. Like I go to bed a lot later and I wake up a lot later. So I don't really start my day until maybe 11 or 12. Um, but I, I can work until 2 or 3 in the morning mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter. I kind of like that quiet time too. Uh, you are religious about your skincare routine. Oh, this skin. <laughs> Touch this skin. Oh my goodness, I'm like, I broke out here and No, here and I'm here. not. I have a breakout up here. I mean, I don't know if breakouts are really a good sign of anything. We stay out of the sun. It's different. Currently. Yeah, I haven't seen the sun in years. <laughs> it's different for an Australian. I No, I do actually have a skincare routine, but I'm not religious about it. No. He does have nice skin, Thank though. you, though. I used to have acne as a teenager, and I would always bargain with God that if he could trade my acne for something, I would take it for anything. And so I think I did trade it for gaining a lot of weight, which is not what I would trade it for now. <laughs> uh, the assumption, you only do your signature style of art. No, no, I'll do anything. Well, we have so many art books here, and James is always picking through the the different books and yeah. different art styles, which I'll is try anything. Yeah. It's fun to see. I love to try everything actually. That's, I mean, that's how I, I, I think, you know, signature style and everything is very subjective and it's always a topic I'll say I'll discuss at another point. So that point will come one day. Fairies and mermaids is signature. Yeah, sure. No, I'll try anything. But how you draw them is not, is what's different. Yeah, but it is subjective because it's like, sure. it's, it's whatever you, I think that style is really in the eye of the beholder because I mean, what you associate as style is whatever you've seen me show you repetitively, but some people choose to not show other parts of, you know, work that they do. So they might believe that that's their style, but that there's a commercial side of it, which they show you all the time. So you think it's that style. It's like someone like Mary Blair I was studying recently who had a collection of personal works that kind of revealed a bit of a different look at what she thought, I guess, she enjoyed 
rather than what I saw her work for concept art for Disney was. Because you have to compartmentalize that as that is commissioned work for a project that she didn't really choose to do. That's someone saying work within these parameters. So can you really say that's her style? Yeah, elements of what she loves shows up in there, um, but she maybe didn't feel as free to, you know, maybe that wasn't what she loved. She loved something else, but we recognize this because this is what we see all the time in Disney concept art books and in media. So I think it is really subjective, but yes, as far as any style goes, I'll work with any and every style and I'll always just cherry pick things that I like and that I enjoy and I want to try again. Um... This is not an assumption. This is just a comment mm -hmm. and a compliment. You have a wonderful teaching style. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, assumption that Queen Bee rules the house. Yeah. Correct. Quiet reign. Oliver gets more of what he wants, but... Which Bianca... leads into the next one. I assume Oliver Patrick is spoiled rotten. He is. Yes, Oliver is, and that is 100% Steve's fault. Next. Uh, Oliver is your favorite child. So I don't call the cats children. <laughs> They're pets. I, I think of them as pets. I, I don't begrudge anyone else doing that. But um, yeah, as far as Oliver being the favorite, I am a little more drawn to Oliver because he's a lot more affectionate. Um, yeah, he's... sure. Why not just say he's my favorite? He's a favorite child. But Bianca is Steve's favorite, so. No, I don't have a favorite. I like them both for different reasons. Oh, oh. But Bianca is the okay. Bianca is the Horcrux of my soul. Mm. So I always say Bianca is Teep's Horcrux. <laughs> I, I really her. like Oliver. I love both of them. Oh, I love both. Uh, here's what else that you're pretty happy all the time. Sure. Yeah, you're pretty happy all the time. I am pretty happy. My best friend and I used to joke that she was the happiest girl in Australia and I was the happiest boy in Australia. So I don't think it's too off base to say that. I will just You always, are a real person. Yeah, I was going to say I will always make sure I reiterate because you're seeing this on social media and this is a constructed piece of media for you to take in. Um, I don't tend to share a lot of what would make me upset or angry or frustrated or irritated or, um, you know, anything that's too divisive. I, I tend to stay away from a lot of that. In the past, I have shared a few things that are a little bit more, uh, I, I guess you wouldn't say so happy, but they tend to be... Uh, scars, not wounds. I have a bit of a personal policy to only be sharing scars, not the wounds. Uh, because I, at least if it is something a little heavier, we can leave with a sense of, you know, recovery or a sense of... Uh, solution, solution, healing, healing, healing Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So if there is something that I'm really going through, I probably would never choose to share that. And in fact, it has. But let's be real. I'm a real person um, sometimes. But for the past, you know, ever since I started this channel, I have experienced every single human emotion that you have experienced. Mm -hmm. I just never chose to publish those. I don't want to. And I, I think it is healthy. Some, so I, sometimes I wish I could tell people, like, you know, be careful <laughs> before you start sharing too much of that. Because it can feel good. Sometimes it can feel very cathartic to get those things off your chest. Um, but there is always a consequence for sharing it on online. And uh, a lot of the time inviting other people into that process, especially if you're going to start monetizing things like your social media or like the content that spawned off of your social media, you can incidentally wrap some of the worst parts of what you're experiencing into money. And then it's incentivized to continue on in that cycle. So, and that's just a study I've been doing of my own kind of thing uh, for a few years now, watching some people who have caught themselves up in that trap. Um, but yeah, for myself, it's always been keep all of that private because you have a right to heal through that privately and then share whatever has, you know, the impact that, that would be positive for people to hear about. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. But I am generally pretty happy. I'm easily amused. I could laugh at the same thing a thousand times over. So if I ever need to cheer up, I'll just pop Kath and Kim on. Or, oh, every or day. Every day. <laughs> uh, um, okay, you are... St you are st you are starting being over trying new art supplies. <laughs> no! I don't think that's true. No, definitely not. I, I will say there was a point where um, I had so much that I felt a little overwhelmed and I thought, have I got every art supply in the world at this point? It's not a bad thing. But then I kind of got upset thinking, well, now I'm never going to have anything new. Like, I'll have everything. There's never going to be anything exciting about getting a new pencil because I'll have all the different kinds of pencils that exist. Uh, and then I really quickly realized that 
brands keep innovating and inventing new stuff. And then I joined Art Snacks, and now I get the boxes every month, and I have much, uh, much joy from <laughs> receiving new supplies every month. I would say Art Snacks kind of reinvigorated my love for uh, trying new art supplies. But that's, I mean, I've been very intentional when I create that content to specifically explore the supplies, which is something I don't do always. So that has, that has really made it enjoyable again. I love that. Uh, assumption, you, you're a Pentecostal. A Pentecostal. So, <laughs> I mean... Yes, let me just go back to the start. This is one we had to talk about. I'm, I'm shocked that it's here. Well, for those people who don't know what a Pentecostal is... Oh, I'm not going to give anyone the rundown. I'm just going to answer <laughs> the assumption. Okay, so I, I... I understand where that assumption probably came from. I have... Uh, I was raised... In a Catholic school, Catholic education, up until a grade, grade nine. You raised in a Christian home. Yes, okay, let me explain this. <laughs> I don't want to get it wrong. I was raised in a Christian home, but I went to a Catholic school, and I was christened, and I went through my Holy Communion, Eucharist and everything, and I went to a Catholic school until I was in grade nine, and I went to a performing arts high school, but also I went to a Baptist church whilst I was going to Catholic school, raised in that Christian home. So after that, I then went to... Uh, kind of an evangelical, like a branch of Hillsong, uh, when I was kind of a later teenager. Which Hillsong Church is there. They have their roots in the Assemblies of God, AOG. which is Pentecostal. Yeah. And then now that I'm in the States, we go to a church that is non denominational. And so I have always worn a, the label of Christian first. Um, and, and my faith has a lot of roots in a lot of different theologies that ultimately all kind of combine to. Uh, lead me where I am right now, which I would just say I'm just non-denominational Christian. So, but I understand that, yeah, I mean, there are so many different roots that are, you know, kind of connected down there. So. Good answer. Yeah. Good job. That's, if that's the official label you're looking for, non-denominational Christian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, non-denominational non Protestant Christian. Oh, yes. Well, now we're getting real yeah, specific. Right. <laughs> um, you're happy. You are a happy introvert. You did religious studies. I did. Uh, so okay. Do, do you want my background? <laughs> yeah. Give us yours, because I, I honestly like. It's never been a huge thing for me to try and figure out the specific labeling of it, uh, because I was more interested in the faith and the understanding and the, the you know the beliefs and how to operate in it. So for me, it was never like I. Ha I never felt like I had to explain to anyone what the actual label was. But Steve understands a lot of those differing theologies and he has a bit of an education in it that I don't. So I grew up in a Protestant Christian home. Um, my, and I went to Christian school my entire life. So I grew up going to an Assemblies of God church from kindergarten through, through high school. And my family on my dad's side, my grandfather and my uncles and such, they are, their background is the United Pentecostal church, which is an apostolic community, which is Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. Assemblies of God is also Pentecostal. And then I actually went to uh, Assemblies of God University as well. And, but I went to a Baptist, I went to a Baptist school from kindergarten through all through high school. And um, so that's my background. It is in very charismatic, e charismatic evangelical understanding of the faith, of the Christian mm -hmm. faith. Um, I no longer uh, attend a Pentecostal or an Assemblies of God church. And now we do go to a non-denominational church. Uh, which the focus is Jesus Christ and um, the love of Jesus. And that's that's kind of where we're at. And that's who we are. Mm. But we do honor and prescribe other, other Christian faiths. You know, we honor... Oh, yeah. yeah. I've never tried to, to do anything. I, I've been so concerned about my own journey. <laughs> I haven't had time for your journey. I'm so sorry. But with, um, but with a background in Christian school, like my entire life, literally through, from kindergarten through university, you, you start to learn and understand the, the difference in denomination and some of the different denominational beliefs and biblical uh, things that people have picked out. And um, I think... See, that, I never did. I, I could never... I, was, I really struggled with, especially going to Catholic school, because, you know, going to Mass and, and being a part of the liturgy and, you know, confessionals and all that, it all seemed so different to when I would go to Baptist church on the, um, on Sunday and, you know, put the overhead projectors on, all things are possible. <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't get the differences. I thought somehow they were all related to the same thing. And I think, you know, having all of that mixed kind of just made me think it really didn't matter to specifically label it. Cause it seemed at the core, everything was 
everything that I was experiencing was kind of similar. There was a through line through all of that. Yeah. But yeah, now I would just say that's, that it's non-denominational Christian, I think is, and you say Protestant in there. That's what I think if you had to, if you had to put the faith that I have, put a specific to it, I mean, the, and try to understand that from an outsider right. perspective, maybe that would be, that would give clarity. One of the mottos here though, uh, that we say is that every we, there's a space for everyone here at this table and that's how we, we welcome everyone's welcome. Yeah. I yeah. think that shows. Yeah. So that's that. Thanks for your extra sure. input, Steve. <laughs> Steve's so nervous. <laughs> it's also one of the topics we don't typically discuss politics, religion, religion. money. I go, I go in a little, little bit on all of them. Never anything too, um, earth shattering, but I don't, I don't mind. We never try to be divisive or alienate. No. I know what that feels like. Yes. And I don't like it, and I don't want you to feel it from me. Correct. So. Uh, you're a happy introvert with mad skills. No, I'm not an introvert. I'm a really extroverted person. You are good about your own intro like your own alone time, though. You can, I can be, be very alone. independent and yeah. very... I'm, I'm completely satisfied being by myself, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's not my preference. Uh, you're, oh, a good, you. you're a good storyteller. Steve's a better storyteller. Maybe. I'm not... I think that's true. James gives the punchline away too early. <laughs> <laughs> I have no time for it. I've got no time to tell the whole story. No, and yeah, he wants to get to the to point. And I'll, I'd like to set up the whole... But when you go experience. back and read... Like, I've literally tried to write a children's book before. Do you remember Daisy? There's literally no story to it. There's, like, it's one thing phrases. happens, and it's just phrases that rhymed. That's as much of a storyteller as I am. I can recall my own stories pretty well, but I think it's because I repeat them so often that they're just... They're just memorized. <laughs> You're fabulous. Thank you. You are. You would like to animate your pictures. Correct assumption. <laughs> <laughs> you would like to animate your pictures and create a GIF. I've tried that before. I've actually created a few GIFs. I wanted to get them onto the Insta Story option where you could search for a GIF. Um, Job's Journal does it, and he has really great ones. And I had tried to do it. I think when I was doing playtest, Patreon was the last time, so 2019. And I actually created a few of them, but I think for you able to. Like, to be able to get into the Instagram search feature, you had to be some kind of verified, or you had to have a certain amount of criteria met that I didn't, and I couldn't be bothered to figure out. So, I have a few GIFs floating around, but you would never be able to find them, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I've tried it. It's Go cute. look, if you can find it. If you can find it, let Close me know. It. You sit and draw all day. No. I do find time to do it almost every day, but no. My... No. No. <laughs> My there's business, other there's so many other do. parts of the business that it's just not funny. I mean, this video itself is going for, what, 32 minutes right now? And then it'll take another few hours to get it edited, edited together, put to put it put up into YouTube, do the thumbnail. So hours will go by where I'm just, you know, you could do about six hours in a day to a video. So, yeah, it's sitting down all day. I wish that all I had to do was draw all day. But it, I think the art of, of JLB Creative makes up about... Like, the art and the playtime is about 20% of what goes on. I say 20 on. or 30%. Like, it is not the main feature. That's like photography. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think anything you make a business, that's why you've got to be so careful about what you decide to monetize and how you separate the business from the passion. So, those times that I do specifically do it, and, like, Instagram Live is why I go there often, because then I have to devote the next hour or so to, to playing draw. and enjoying myself. Um, and you know, there's, it's not about money. It's not about, I haven't told anyone I'm going to be there. I can just enjoy it freely and play. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's, unfortunately, it's not the main thing that I do. <laughs> uh, they nice. assume that these quotes, you'll, you will like these quotes. Draw whatever you feel like, however you feel like. I make fun art, not fine art. I do like those quotes. It's pretty. Yes. Yeah, like, that's good. Assumption, you never have creative block. True, actually. I'm, uh, I'm not a huge believer in creative block. Controversial yet brave topic. H hold on. <laughs> the truth is, is that creative block... He, Steve's trying to... Um, he, well, you're trying to PR me. No, I said what I said. Um, no, no, I I'll just think... say this much. I'm not, I'm not being mean. But I do... He's a human being. There are times where he's like, what... Would I do it this way or should I do it that way? That's and, a question. I'm not right. blocked. And so then I say, <laughs> try it this way. No, my creative block theory is that, yes, I do think people feel blocked from having a creative experience or a moment. 
but I always believe there is something to try. There's always something to pick up and do. There's always a pencil still there. There, I mean, as long as you have that, right? Like if you have a pencil and you have a piece of paper, there's always a tutorial on YouTube. There's always some TikTok that could inspire you to do something. There's always a swatch card that you could make for one of your tins. Like there is always something to get you to be creative. So I don't know how people could be fully blocked from it. I believe there is, a lack of motivation in some cases, and that could make you feel like you're blocked from it. But then I wouldn't really say you're what you are. I don't, I don't really know what could get in the way of creativity. I think it's always there. Um, time. Time, but then are you blocked? I'm specifically talking to people blocked? who say like, oh, I, I was trying to do, I was trying to, you know, work today, but I'm just feeling creative block and I can't do anything. And it's like, hmm. you've got to be able to do something. This is my art. Look, I am being very very outspoken about this, um, to each their own. I'm just saying for me, there was a time in the past where I used to think, oh my goodness, what if I run out of ideas? Like what happens if I don't have any ideas left? And then I just remembered that I was created by someone who created the entire planet. So I'm sure there are some ideas left. Like why, why bother about that? Why wonder about that? There have been plenty of times when I've sat down at the table and I thought I've got no ideas in my brain today, what should I do? And I will pick up a stamp and I will stamp it down and I will start drawing over the top of it. Something eventually comes, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe I've been doing little bits and pieces for an hour and nothing happened, but I wasn't blocked. I still could do it. I could still do it. I didn't have great, you know, my expectation. If I had an expectation to create something amazing just out of nowhere, maybe that expectation wasn't met, but that doesn't mean I was but blocked. But you created something that might have motivated you and led you to, to the next thing, whatever it might be. Yeah, I, I really believe that if people just, again, that's too much. I'm not gonna address people. I'm gonna address me. I, I used to think that, but I have since realized every single time that's even come across my mind, like, oh, I have nothing to do. I just have to start something. And it, it either picks up or it doesn't, but I have never been blocked. I think the only thing that would block me is if like Steve was in front of the door, hands wide saying, no, you can't go in. That is a creative block. <laughs> I don't know what else would be. A literal block. There, there has to be a, a specific physical block because I can't imagine, you know, I think the feelings are there. I think you feel like, oh, I'm not gonna have any great ideas today. I don't think that's creative block. I think that's just doubt. I think it's lack of motivation. I think it could be a mix of a ton of different things, but I don't think, Bar someone physically blocking you from picking up pencils and papers, I don't think you could be that blocked. You are don't come for me, don't cancel me. <laughs> I know uh, it's controversial. Okay, assumption, you're pretty quiet in a big group setting. Not sure why I assume that, lol. That's incorrect. No. In a group setting, he's loud. I'm loud. He, he, he will commandeer it. In a good way. I'm actually quiet. I'm going to PR Steve now. <laughs> I will quiet. I get quiet. We switch up. We, we switch roles. I'll be quiet in a big group Steve's setting. actually a lot quieter than you would expect in a big group setting. I am louder. Louder, louder. And very funny. And it's worse. I mean, my whole family's kind of like that. Yeah. Not my sister, really. But like if my mom and I are in the same group. The rest of us. The, the, it's like the, neither of us know how to conceive. Yeah. <laughs> You see all, <laughs> all of the, the married in to the family. We all just kind of sit around and look at each other. and uh, Which is interesting because I also come from a very loud family. Yeah, I was going to say. I come from a loud family. But I you would rather... You aren't wallflowers. No, we're them. not. Not at all. But, you know, there's so much personality there that I think you can have the spotlight. <laughs> I'm going to go back one because I feel like you're, you're uncomfortable with something I said about the creative block. And I want to give you a chance to address it. What? Live on screen. Did I, did I, should I address the creative block? No. You oh. did great. Why? Did it, was it bad? No. Okay. It was, it was, it was. <laughs> it was intense. It was intense and it was, uh, <laughs> you got all the feelings. <laughs> I do have all the feelings. You know why? Here we go. <laughs> oh, we do have to go back. I want to go back. And I feel bad because Steve's here and I know he just wants me to answer nicely and just move on. But. I just feel sad if people believe that there is something in their way like that. Like, it makes me sad to think that there are people who wish for creativity, who suddenly feel like there's something that's stopping them. I want to know what the stopping, what is stopping you. I think here's, you. here's here, I'll, I'll tell you. This is what it is. Just so we can move it. It's not about creative block per se. I think we use creative block. And there's someone, as a creative myself, I think sometimes it's about comparison. Comparison is the thing that blocks you. Comparison is the thing that gets in the way. If I have an, a driver or I want to 
to do something creative that I oftentimes live in my thoughts that think, well, why would I try to do that if I'm not going to be as good as that person or I'm not going to get the results that I want because I know that I am not there yet. So we start to compare yourself to you compare yourself to others as well as to yourself. And I believe that is what creates creative block. Creative block, I think canceling creative block is the way for you to step past that insecurity and say, I'm going to actually grab my pen or I'm going to grab some, some, some watercolor and I'm just going to make something messy and see what it leads me to do. For me, I'm just going to grab my camera or I'm going to try something editing wise that I've never done before so I can learn how to do it. I feel like that is what creative block to me is insecurity and, and which is ultimately the foundation. But that's what comparison. I'm saying is create, is this thing creative block? Is it even a thing or is what you're actually trying to address fear of failure, insecurity, lack of motivation, comparison, you know, it, you know, the comparison game that keeps you feeling insecure. Like what, because I don't believe that there is a good ointment to put on the problem of creative block. Do you know Steve's trying to calm me down? I get so passionate about it. I really do because I just don't think that creative block, I don't know exactly what people are referring to there because I think there is always something that can be done. And if the problem really was fear of failure or of insecurity, then at least know that, that that is the problem. Creativity has not left you. You are just not willing to go there for fear of it not working out then you can apply a better ointment to that problem. Or maybe you don't feel like it and that's okay too. Yeah, or you don't feel, and that is so okay. My goodness, the amount of times I've heard people just say like, I'm creatively blocked, so I won't be doing anything for a week. It's like, girl, just go on holiday. No one cares. Like, just enjoy creating when you want to and then don't when you don't. And sometimes people that get daily Hobonichis that can't keep up and are fine. so furious with themselves that they can't keep up. It's like, no, literally no one cares but you. So just either do care or don't care. If you do care, you'll do something about it. If you don't care, you won't. I don't understand. And it's all okay. Of all of it is sometimes. fine. I think it's a social media thing. We want people to think we're doing better than we are. We want people to think that there's no problems going on. Believe me, I understand. We've addressed this before. I only share some of the better parts. So yes, when I feel these things, I have to go and address these before they become issues for you to see. I think you can see my aggression is coming out now. So I haven't addressed that today. But I'm just, I'm so, I'm so saddened by the thought that someone would think that their problem is creativity hasn't showed up for them today. You have to show up for it. It is always there. Well, you, I think it works both ways. I think it's... Really? Maybe we just have different no, opinions. No, 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 no. I'm in agreement with you. I think you have to be willing to show up for it just as much as you believe that it's going to be there for you because it's always there for you. We're creative beings. We are created with creativity. Maybe some people just don't believe that. But and that's fine too. And, if and you have a different opinion, I, I welcome sure. your different opinion in this space. We really don't have to argue about it. I hope I haven't set anyone off in the comment sections, but I understand it's a, it's a topic that, that people feel really upset about because it is a sad thing to think that, that you're being stopped. But you know, you know what is also interesting for me, and I can only talk about myself in this space, and I have a different medium, you know, I'm a photographer. For me, with creative blocks, sometimes I, uh, I'll open up a magazine, or I'll buy a book, you know, and I will mm. flip through uh, another photographer's work that is inspiring to me, one of the greats. And uh, I, that, to me, actually starts to fuel my creativity. I think, well, if I, how could I recreate that, or how can I do that? And for me, something that helps me get in my creative block is just to copy, right? So if you have an art book, right, now. if you have an art book that you like, that you think, oh, I really like this style, I'm going to copy this for the sake of learning, that might help break down those, those walls, that creative block yeah. walls. And it's such an easy, simple solution, and there's no pressure attached to it. That's why I encourage you to, to copy whatever I'm doing. If you feel like it, just do it. I would hate to think that even I might play a part in stopping you from picking up your supplies today. So I really hope you know that my intention is coming from that place. I don't want you to believe there's something that could stop you because I don't believe that about you. I don't believe it about anybody. I think it, you've, everyone's got an intrinsic creativity. Yeah, and maybe that, it's even like just grabbing your brush pen and making mermaid tales over and over and well, over I again. Well, I mean, <laughs> we did it on Instagram Live the other day. I, I pulled out my journals and I never really have plans for those Instagram Lives. When I'm doing it, I guess you could say I approach with creative block, whatever that version is. And I get there and I just have to start doing something. And then even the conversation triggers, you know, a, a certain path that I could go down and explore. My expectations are set to zero. As long as I'm on the live stream and I'm doing something, I win for myself. 
Um, I'm not expecting to create masterpieces to be framed in galleries, so I think expectation is a really big thing that creeps out there too. Um, but, you know, the other day, I have exercises, I have routines that I will get into. Stamp and illustration is a great way for me to get out of my own head, because it's playing puzzle, it's playing Lego with the stamps. Going to do the, um, on Instagram Live the other day when we made the little monsters in my studio, by collaging bits and pieces, like taking a pen cap and drawing that out as the head, and taking a stamp and drawing that out as the legs, like, stuff like that. Those are exercises to literally get you going, and then... That's how I just don't think you could be that blocked. Well, everybody's different. But everyone is different. I will acknowledge that. So if you feel differently about it, that is fine. Are we good here? I think so. Okay. I can officially move on. <laughs> right. I didn't expect that to be the question that I got that so was upset the trigger. about. That wow. was it. <laughs> um, the assumption is that you like piano music. Yeah, I think it's really soothing. We should probably start playing some. Mm. <laughs> uh, you've tried scrapbooking before. Yes. My mom actually went to one of those, it was like a Tupperware party, but it was for scrapbooking. And she went when I was kind of nine or 10 and she bought, I think $500 worth of scrapbooking supplies, which, you know, valuation these days, probably like $2 million worth of supplies. And it was a- a Paper and stickers. A, paper and stickers, embellishments, embellishments. She had a suitcase full of it and never did anything with it. So I used to go in there all the time, pick out things from the suitcase. In fact, those little Fiskos, the, the really bright orange plastic templates, those are from that like years ago. That's funny. Um, those are like 20 years old. So yeah, she had that and I would make scrapbooks for people. I would make lots of things for friends and uh, make scrapbook albums, mostly of myself to give to family. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> she would never. Assumption is that you're having fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, sure sounded like I wasn't. Yes, I am having We fun. have another one uh, <laughs> regards to your brother. You're not close to your brother because you never talk about him. Yeah, no, I am close. I, I just don't, I don't share a lot of his personal details or life. And I think it's funny too, because I think from my perspective, I don't really share a lot about my sister either. I don't really share a lot about my family. I think maybe because my sister and my mum and like Elijah, they've shown up in some vlogs before. Um, maybe that feels more like sharing, but at the same time, I feel like I've never actually shared a lot about my own family history that publicly. Um, your brother also lives far, far away from your, from your family too. Yeah, my brother lives in a different state. Um, in Australia. In so. Australia. Yeah, he lives in Northern Territory. My family are all New South Wales. So yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's got his own thing going on. Uh, another assumption, not assumption, but I love your laugh and whenever I hear it, it makes me smile. Thank you. <laughs> you do have a good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> assumption, you have had formal art classes because you're such a fabulous artist. No, I went to gr grade eight with my art at school and I thought being an artist was meant that you could replicate it really well, which to be fair, they were teaching us a lot of art history and a lot of art history was about learning from the masters and being an apprentice. So I thought I was really onto something, but I would give pr plagiarized works to my teacher to grade and he would tell me that that was wrong. And I didn't like that. You're so, like 12 or 13, yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. And you're trying to copy the Mona Lisa, calm down. I know. Yeah. And I thought I did a really good job. Yeah, I'm sure you did, but it's like, you're plagiarizing. <laughs> it's like, you can never. Um, yeah, anyway, I actually quit art and I didn't like it. I didn't like studying it at school. The only other formal training I've had was I went to a fashion portfolio course at East Sydney Tech when I was 17, turning 18. Um, and it was a five weekend workshop. And I learned a lot about fashion illustration. Love that. You don't like people touching your art supplies. I love it. I really love to share the art supplies. I think that is, that's an interesting assumption. I want everyone to play with everything that I've got here. Um, only because I know what it's like to, to really covet certain art supplies and not be able to afford them. Just to see or, what it's like. Yeah, I just want to know, like, what does that pencil feel like? You keep drawing with it, I want to, I want to use it. So yeah, I really love to be able to share the art supplies. When, specifically when we go to Art Journaling the Magic Retreats, I will, anyone can use anything from my pencil cases and I incidentally just pick up everyone else's supplies as well. But yeah, I love to share it. Uh, the other assumption, it was kind of similar to what we just answered, self-taught artist? Yeah, I think self-motivated. I, I learn through a lot of my mistakes, but I think a lot of the teaching I have to give credit where credit is due. It is all the library books I could borrow as a kid, um, family friends that would draw with me, my grand would color in with me all the time. 
And, you know, a lot of YouTubers, when I first got into art journaling, there were tons of YouTubers who just shared so much mm. for free on YouTube. Um, it is a big reason to why this day I make it a part of my mission to be accessible so that there is always something that someone can have, for, like, access for free and, uh, and enjoy and learn from. So, so generous of you. Oh, it's generous of them. I'm just following that lead. You're Out just, of respect. You're just paying it forward. <laughs> Pay it forward. That's a good movie. Another assumption. We will have dinner Did together soon. That song. <laughs> yes, I know who that is. We will. <laughs> I'll see you Sunday. Soon. We'll probably see you Sunday. Uh, another assumption. You're amazing. Is that a... Incorrect assumption. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, assumption that your cats are secretly humans in fursuits. Pros and cons. No, I, I don't humanize the cats they're, too they're much. They're animals. They're I always pets. They're pets. They're animals. Because I will get too upset. They smell like pets. They're so annoying. They are so annoying. I love them. They're spoiled. They are spoiled. We love They are definitely part of the family. Mm. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I actually, sometimes I resent having pets because I feel like... Don't, don't go there. Don't <laughs> I'm stop. I'm not going to go there. No, stop. Stop. <laughs> well, they are part of our family and we love them. Um, uh, assumption. You stopped dancing because of an injury? Yes. You stopped dancing professionally. I stopped professionally. dancing professionally. Listen to Steve. <laughs> professionally. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to throw myself under the bus here. Um, unlike what happened to my dance career. No, I did stop dancing professionally in 2015 after a car accident. It took about 16 months to heal, and then I never got another dance job, so I'm still working on that. God said you're going to draw. Yeah, my, my doors were very specifically opened in this new direction, and I just led with blind faith and walked right through them and now we're here so I um yeah I haven't closed that door at all there's a bit of self-doubt that goes on because I was always taught that like by 27 and 29 and heaven forbid 30 you were trying to dance your body would just give out so I'm really trying to prove everybody wrong by uh yeah becoming a, a dancer later in life <laughs> but I had a really extensive career that I am thankful for so great career Assumption, I assume you are able to generate an income to support both of you in California. <laughs> now, what do you really want to know? <laughs> How much money I make? <laughs> it's an interesting assumption. Um, and yes, I guess you're correct. We both live in California. We're both artists with jobs in the creative arts. Steve does photography and he is a performer. I was a performer looking to be again. And I also work in mixed media arts and crafts. So yeah, absolutely. We do make enough to live in Southern California. So very, very pleased with that. Very blessed mm -hmm. and thankful. Assumption, you're an extrovert. Yes. Uh, assumption, you like attention in a positive way. Life of the party. I love negative attention. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me. He is uh, no, party. yeah, I do. I, I mean, I wouldn't say my, my intention is to get attention. I don't think that's what I do, but I think naturally I do command a lot of attention because I'm so loud. Assumption, you can sew. You can sew. Yeah. My grand taught so, me how to sew. Uh, yeah. It's all fake. I don't really know how to do it properly. I love but. this. You used to be a mean person. I love that you used to be. <laughs> yes, we won't go there because Steve will get really upset and try and overproduce that answer. Um, <laughs> that's hurt me people. being mean. I um, hurt, no. hurt people hurt people. Oh, stop it. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah, look, I was, I was bullied a lot when I was younger, and it, I ended up becoming the bully in later school. in high school. And yeah, I was incredibly mean. And very creative about it too. So that's the worst kind of mean. Very vindictive and very creative. Um, I've since grown through that period. It took me a few years, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, a lot of self-defense kind of mechanisms. Growing into protecting all the parts of myself I didn't want people to make fun of me for. So I'd make fun of it in others. Very typical patterns of behavior sure. for a mean person. Um, I, I do still struggle with that. To this day, I think it's a lifelong struggle, struggle just because a part of my personality is so confrontational and it's always very quick, I think, for my mind to think up a scenario where I could really attack and, and be really calculated, but I really fight against it because there's just no purpose. Like, no, well, the clever thing is, is at least you're self-aware. James is self-aware enough to know. Mm. He, I'll hear it. I'll hear it and then he'll talk himself away from it and out of it. So it's still part of him. I, I guess. still very much acknowledge it. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I can write the email out. I just won't send it. Mm -hmm. I will talk to Steve and say, this is everything I want to say about this and very publicly and very aggressively. Um, but I won't. Yeah. So I do have enough self control, I think, to make sure that that doesn't get the best of me. Obviously, sometimes it's harder than others and I can't say I'm perfect, but I am far removed from the, uh, the little Jamaican I was in <laughs> high school. <laughs> Go 
go do that research if you want to know exactly what I was like. She was my inspiration, let's just put it that way. Assumption, you are bossy. Very! <laughs> my best friend told me I was bossy. That was the first time I'd ever really heard it when we were skipping class to go and play in the digital lab at school and we were making our own versions of ABBA music on GarageBand. And I can't tell you what she called me, but it was very clear that I was very bossy. It's very bossy. And what's even worse is it's recorded in the music, me being bossy. <laughs> so yeah, I have, I'm very bossy. Steve says that I'm Miranda Priestley, but she gets stuff done. Uh, final assumption, you don't have a favorite color. I love red. Yes. I do, I do have a favorite color. It is red, strong, bold, bright red lipstick red. I love red. Red ruby slippers. I mean, does that come as a surprise to anybody? Not, Not at all. all. Okay. I think that, that, that wraps it up. That wraps it up. Good job. Thank you. I think we got, I think we got expressive. I think we got heated. I think we got real and candid. Look, this is a pretty real, honest reflection of what we're like discussing things together. Steve and I are different people. I mean, we, we're married, but I think that happens with everybody. I would have produced it a little bit more. You know, yeah, Steve is very careful about how he approaches people. I have always been this unfiltered and even worse than this, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think even this is me a bit yeah. on my best behavior. Um, this is me taking mental notes and that we'll talk about later. When this is done. <laughs> but it's his project and this is his channel and he said, I want to do one and done. So I said, yeah, okay. Well, Steve did like, Steve, I guess to put this into context, this is the part of Steve that brings out the part of me that has grown to understand it really does matter how you say things to people. It does matter that you're coming from a place where they can understand you and that you're not just coming across brash just because you can. Mm -hmm. Like, so Steve grows me into that aspect. I'm certainly not I there try. yet. Um, but then I also encourage Steve to be really, really candid and open yeah. about whatever he's feeling. Cause at the end of the day, you know, we really are people like just regular people. And I don't think people assume that we're not, but I think it's really easy on social media with parasocial relationships to assume that this we is all a hundred percent right. real. And like that, I mean, it is real, but you are seeing such a veneer of a full 360 degree world that goes on. I don't know about a veneer, but you're seeing a part, just one part of a 360 degree world. Totally, yeah. Veneer's the wrong word. Facade's yeah. the wrong word. Yeah. No, and I you're mean, seeing an angle. You're seeing like, you know, angle. this little piece of the pie, but the rest is the full world that we live in. And, um, and we're human. We kind of like right now, you're only seeing the, the video camera look this, but if you move the video camera around, you'd see, you don't want to move the video <laughs> camera around. You'd see all the mess and the chaos you'd, and the destruction. You'd see all the creativity happening around us. Yeah. And so I think if we, if we should leave it at anything, it's, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, just because we have opinions, uh, doesn't mean that they should discount your opinions. Uh, you're all welcome here, no matter how different our opinions mm -hmm. are. Uh, our main goal, and I would say my main goal, I can really speak for myself really, but my main goal is to encourage you, um, to educate you when I do, um, to empower you with the confidence to use all that creativity that you have, uh, and just hopefully encourage you the best way I know how by sharing the joy of my own creativity. And so that is really first and foremost my mission. Everything else that comes around as a result of that will be what it is. And, you know, we can take that as it comes. But Steve likes to share in it too because, you know, he's also a part of this and, you know, he pops in from time to time. And I think it, it's also nice to get a different perspective. You know, I, I can always speak about me, but Steve offers a bit of a different angle on me that even sometimes I don't see. So hopefully Ma this marriage. has been... <laughs> Marriage. marriage. <laughs> Hopefully this has been interesting for you to watch and it has cleared up a lot of whatever your assumptions might have been or given you a deeper understanding of who we are and what we do here. Myself, I guess you didn't really answer too many of them, but um, it says a lot about you that you're married to me with all those answers. <laughs> don't touch me. Big assumption. I like PDA. I don't. She hates PDA. <laughs> okay. No, don't do it. All right. Thank you so much. Do you have any final words? Um, thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for listening. Uh, we would love to see you on an Instagram live. Come mm. talk to us. Come hang out with us. Instagram live, I think, is probably one of, maybe my, one of my more favorite spaces uh, here at JLB Creative because it's pretty candid. It's pretty, I mean, it's, it's just a really cool space. It's a cool yeah. hang. And uh, we answer questions as we see them and... We kind of talk like this when yeah. we're on there. Yeah, like, I'll question some things he says. But I've, and we'll it, tell stories, and James will do some yeah. some really cool art. And it's it's a fun, it's a, it's like a fun hang. 
I think if you have any specific questions from this video that are that probably need a lot of explanation, just you know, Wait rewind till... the video a video and uh, hear the part where I say I don't answer all the comments on YouTube. Uh, bring those over to Instagram yeah. Live. I'm going to specifically request that you bring anything that's a little more discussion heavy over to Instagram Live because we would love to give you more candid thoughts on that. Yeah. If you feel like you wanted to discuss it further, we're happy to share um, anything extra yeah. over there. Thank you so much for being here, Barbara Walters. You're welcome. I will see you again sometime soon. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed the journaling that was going along with this video. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.